goalkeepers and coaches, Christian from Keeperstop.com. We're here with a very special guest, friend and mentor, Dan Gaspar, founder of Star Goalkeeper Academy, a treasure from goalkeeping standpoint. Four World Cup campaigns, two with Iran, Portugal, South African national team, Benfica, Porto, uh, uh, Sporting. You know, you work with some of the best players and clubs around the world, so you have a lot to share uh, based on your experience in goalkeeping and as a, a professional coach. So I'd love to pick your brain a little bit about where you see, based on your experience, where we are in goalkeeping around the world and more importantly in the U.S. As you mentioned, I've been back recently from my international journey and uh, recently traveled around the United States doing goalkeeping summits and workshops and seminars and etc. And I have to be perfectly honest with you because I wouldn't have it any other way, CB, and that is uh, I have some concerns. And in particular with the lost art of catching. Say to yourself repetitively, catch, catch, catch and it's amazing how your body executes that command one touch goalkeeping means you touch it once and you terminate the save when the ball's in your hands you're better than than messi you're better than cristiano ronaldo when the ball's in your hands you have total control you have total power and play give me a rhythm guys we are now producing goalkeepers who are blockers deflectors punchers essentially walls and we're getting away from the elegance and the class um, of the position of goalkeeping, in particular, catching the ball. I remember years ago when I was a young goalkeeper, uh, I took so much pride in catching the ball. And how did I develop that? I would throw the ball against a cemented wall or a tree and I would hold on to it. I would volley until the, I reached a point where I could volley as hard as I could and I would hell, I'll hold on to the ball. And that gave me tremendous confidence because a ball in a goalkeeper's hands is the best player in the world, better than Ronaldo, better than Messi, because that's the ultimate control. And we have to get back to that one-touch goalkeeper, or at least get back to controlling the ball rather than the ball controlling us. The fear of making a mistake is so great now um, that we're just, you know, blocking and deflecting and punching, and which means that you can basically put an athlete in goal and somehow, some way, they find a way to keep the ball out of the net. And that truly isn't what the art of goalkeeping is. So I make a personal appeal to all the goalkeeper coaches at all levels to really emphasize capturing the ball. And it's not just with your hands. When we catch the ball, we catch the ball with the entire body. If I was to throw a ball at a concrete wall, it would bounce back just as hard as I threw it. But that's not what we want in our goalkeepers. We don't want them to be robotic and stiff-like. We want them to be like a soccer net. When you throw the ball into the net, the net embraces, it catches the ball. And I'm hoping that we can now begin to emphasize more catching than we have currently. And all respect to the modern goalkeeping uh, training methods today. I mean, obviously today's goalkeeper is no longer a goalkeeper, he's a field player. He's a sweeper keeper and the ability to be effective with your feet as well as your hands is extremely important. Being comfortable with the ball at your feet as well as your hands is extremely important. We don't want now to neglect the hands because of the emphasis of the feet. Why can't we combine both? It's, you know, in order for a goalkeeper to be a sweeper keeper, they have to prevent the ball from going into the net. In order for an outside back to do overlaps and to attack, they need to first defend. So let's get back to hardcore goalkeeping. Technical proficiency, loving the ball, not dropping the ball, catching the baby, not dropping the baby. You know, things that we've spoken about at Star Goalkeeper Academy for uh, decades. Um, going on to your point with blocking and splaying and whatever, is I think that what happens is is that we get caught up, we as in goalkeeper get, coaches get caught up on trends. Yes. Who's doing what? You know, De Gea is saving more balls with his feet. Um, or, you know, the splaying technique seems to be really popular right now. Question for you is that uh, what role do you think social media 
and the internet having goalkeeper coaches. Enormous, absolutely enormous, and unfortunately so. Um, it isn't because we see famous goalkeepers and famous leagues making unorthodox saves that that now becomes the standard and the role model. It is happening and that's unfortunate. We've taken a futsal goalkeeping save where the space is limited, where the goal is smaller, where the ball is smaller, and now we're transporting that save, that K save, the plank, the block, now into the outdoor game. And I'm opposed to that. I'm opposed to that because I believe that should be the last option of a goalkeeper's ability to make a save. If they're in that position, several things went wrong. Number one, they didn't organize their defensive pieces properly, they didn't communicate properly, or simply they didn't have the courage to be brave to put their bodies into risking risky situations and throwing their bodies at the ball. So we need to be careful and we need to be careful because doesn't mean that you're playing at the highest levels that you're now the technical role model for the rest of the world to follow. Many of the goalkeepers at the highest levels are not technically proficient. They're successful. But why can't we, CB, as goalkeeper coaches, demand that the keepers be technically perfect as well as tactically perfect. Why can't we combine the two? Right now, there's such a separation. There's such a disproportionate amount of training with the feet and the hands. We cannot neglect the hands. That's the privilege that we have. That's what makes us unique and special from all the other players on the field. Why not master that skill? Eric Vauder from Rice USA, made a great analogy. And that was, in NFL football, you have the wide receiver, who similarly is a, is a goalkeeper. The ball is thrown to that wide receiver. Not only does he have to catch the ball, an odd shaping ball, but he now knows he's gonna get hit by a truck, essentially, when he tries to catch it. Yet, many times they manage to hold on to the ball. Why can't we hold on to a round, a round object? of a soccer ball. Why can't we demand that standard of excellence? That's my question to the goalkeeper coaches. That's my challenges to the goalkeeper coaches. I want you to take that responsibility to emphasize the importance of capturing the ball. I think the part of social media and keeper stop, obviously, you know, part of the success is based on the content that we create. Um, and there's a misconception with advanced goalkeeper training. It has to be artful and it has to be acrobatic and it has to be standing on their head at the end of the day as you said you got to take care of two things your body and the ball you got to control those two factors and it doesn't have to have flaming wheels and bicycles and jumping over or through things and parents and goalkeepers as well as goalkeeper coaches get caught up in the theatrics of goalkeeping the theatrics um, it is an art but remember at the very core it's um, the simple things. As you would say at SGA is practice doesn't necessarily make perfect, all right? It makes permanent. So now we're getting back to, you know, why does a wide receiver catch the ball as well as he does? It's because they throw the ball and he catches it. He's not, you know, catching a, a square, you know, while there's, you know, circus animals behind him. It's the same thing done over and over again. It's committing it to sell your memory. It's committing it to um, those pictures in their head where they know what this is. So I feel like we have too much of an emphasis on the theatrics. Yeah, I mean, I'm in favor of creativity, of imagination. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a big fan of routine because that normally develops boredom as right. any aspect of life does when it's the same way, the same time, all the time. Um, but we don't necessarily have to turn this into a three ring circus. Of course. You know, we got to keep it simple, safe and secure. And we want our goalkeepers to understand that that's what hardcore goalkeeping is. If you save what you're supposed to save, you're strong and solid and you've mastered the fundamentals, you'll have a great career. If every now and then you're able to make that magical save, great. 
But it's far more important to save what you're supposed to save than trying to make that extraordinary save. Blocking just like high hand over 90 saves. They're a tool in your toolbox of many different bookkeeping tools to make those saves. Fundamentals to catching that are first. Um, because of the art of goalkeeping and how it's developing, how do you think the role of the goalkeeper coach in the U.S. is evolving? It is, um, although my wish and my hope in the future is that the goalkeeper coach um, earns the respect that they deserve in a technical staff. And what do I mean by that? Usually the goalkeeper coach is the last on the totem pole, usually the least compensated. Yet, we all agree that the goalkeeper is very important to the team. An average team with an outstanding goalkeeper becomes a very competitive team. A good team with an average goalkeeper becomes an average team. So I believe the goalkeeper coach, like fitness coaches who are now performance coaches and now have taken um, more prestige and been compensated uh, better, why can't that happen with the goalkeeper coach? We need to compensate goalkeeper coaches so that they can earn a living, so that they, they can afford to have a lifestyle that their family deserves. Usually in a budget, the goalkeeping portion is overlooked. Usually within an infrastructure, whether it's a national team CB or whether it's a professional club or a youth club, the goalkeeper coach is usually the forgotten element of a successful structure. And that needs to change. And it needs to change starting with us as goalkeeper coaches demanding that we're respected and that we are professionals and that we have a significant impact in the success as well as the failure of the team. Goalkeeper coaches need to move past just being a fitness component of goalkeeping, reactions up, down, left, right, to being um, an assistant coach, you know, you know, being you know, involved in set pieces, you know, what you guys do in corner, what a team does in corner kicks, as well as the goalkeeping um, portion as well. Yeah, we know that a goalkeeper coach training a goalkeeper on a separate island separated from the team has its benefits, particularly in the technical side of things. But for the goalkeeper to maximize their success, uh, success and to really impact the team, they need to be engaged with the team. They need to be integrated with the team because we all know the best goalkeeper coach is the game. So the interaction between the goalkeeper coach and the technical staff, in particular the head coach, is crucial to maximizing the benefit of the goalkeeping, goalkeeper, and ultimately the team. Dan, now that you're home, you've been traveling around the US. You have all this experience on the international stage, as well as some of the best clubs in the world. Are US goalkeeper coaches good enough? They're not only good enough, they're better. And the reason why I say that is because of the experiences that I've had that you just highlighted. Why are goalkeeper coaches so renowned overseas? It isn't really because of their methods. It's because of their culture. It's because of the game being the number one sport in their nation. It's because of the clubs that they train at that have an enormous world appeal and brand that allows them uh, to be elevated. We don't have that yet. We're getting there. We're progressing and it's going to take time. We're the best nation on the planet, but doesn't mean we're the best in everything. But in regards to goalkeeping coaches, Chris, I can tell you without any reservation that we are world class. The proof is, is the number of American goalkeepers who have gone beyond our borders and who have been extremely successful coming from a so-called non-soccer nation. We have this instinct of hand-eye-ball coordination. Goalkeeper coaches typically um, here in this country are well-educated, collegiately educated, um, so they have the mental capacity. They're very diverse not only from the technical aspects, but from the psychological components, from the technical aspects as well. So they're very well-rounded, very well-informed. They have the creativity and the imagination to get the best out of the goalkeepers that they're training. 
So I'm extremely optimistic about uh, the American goalkeeper coach, the impact that they've had on the world stage. There are many goalkeeper coaches around the world who are now employing the training methods that were established, founded, and created in this country. So as American goalkeeper coaches, we can hold our head up high, we can go anywhere in the world, and I'm an example of that, be well received, well respected, and actually impact goalkeeping development. That's exceptional. Um, you know, as somebody that spent a lot of time with you, you know, it's given me confidence um, when you share your stories of, you know, of who you've trained and how you've trained them and who they're playing against, the Ronaldo's, the Messi's of the world, saving PKs, uh, what have you. Um, where do you think we are as a soccer culture, goalkeeping, from an educational standpoint? I think we've gotten complacent, CB. I think we're getting too casual. We're, we've taken for granted the years of successful goalkeepers. We had some great generation of goalkeepers who were outstanding in the MLS, who went overseas and, and, uh, and earned the respect from a, a real challenging, difficult soccer uh, culture. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very confident that we'll get that back. However, we're in a little bit of a slump right now. I mean, we don't have the depth that we once had. We don't have really the one or two or three goalkeepers that we can refer as truly the role models for the rest of the youth national team structure. I'm disappointed in US soccer not being able to confirm a goalkeeper technical director, both for the women's side and the men's side. Um, I think that's very unfortunate. We need to have synergy and harmony in the way that we train, and that needs to be established by a goalkeeper technical director who has a proven track record and experience at the world stage, knows what the world standards need to be like. Um, so I'm hoping that U.S. soccer in particular provides the resources and the investment um, in developing a curriculum, a blueprint that all goalkeeper coaches can follow and that it's crystal clear on what we're targeting, what's the profile, what are the characteristics, what are the best training methods so that there's consistency. I 100% agree. As a development goalkeeper, one of the things that I've always taken to heart from you, uh, Dean Conway, Phil Wedden, other goalkeepers um, that I've uh, surrounded myself with, is that you never stop learning. Absolutely. You know, the game is the best teacher, of course, um, and you can learn so much from watching others. Uh, I can learn something on how a new goalkeeper coaches, how they're, how they're approaching a session with, a, uh, with an eight-year-old. Um, and that's refreshing to me where I'm like, you know, I like that approach, or I like what, how he said it, or, you know, that person's a teacher, you know, a classroom teacher. I like how they positioned that learning opportunity to be better consumed and appreciated by. I was uh, extremely fortunate, CB. Uh, my best mentor, my best friend, my best coach was my father. And he taught me about the lesson of humility in a very harsh way. Uh, back in Colts Park and in Hartford here in uh, Connecticut, uh, my dad would train me and train me the old fashioned way, bag of balls, 10 or 12 balls, put them at the penalty spot, would volley them to me and I would catch. Well, this one particular day, he volleyed the balls to me and I let them all in. And that was strange. And my dad came up to me and says, hey, son, are you okay? I said, yeah, no problem, dad. He goes, okay, let's do this again. Put the balls all on the penalty spot, struck them all, and I let every single one in. He comes up, he says, what's wrong, son? And I said, dad, you can't score on me unless I want you to. He said, really? He packed up all the balls, put them in the bag, drove home, took me an hour and 15 minutes to walk home. Sadly, he never, never trained me again. And uh, that taught me the, the lesson of humility, um, 
taught me the lesson of listening and learning and growing, just like what you described. So despite doing this for a few years, I'm always eager. I'm always ambitious. I always want to learn. I know, you know, education is power. And the biggest thrill and satisfaction that I have and that I sense um, is the goalkeeper coaches that have developed through SGA and have gone on and done extremely well. And I have a lot of pride and I'm very proud in their success. And uh, that's what it's about. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us. The more we share, the more we all have. And if you really think about some of your impact uh, on U.S. goalkeeping as a whole, and I'm not talking about the goalkeepers you trained, um, Des McLean and yeah. uh, long, one of the uh, longest serving MLS coaches um, from a goalkeeping perspective. Uh, He's with the Colombian national the team now. Colombian national team now, uh, Aaron Hyde. Yeah, a champion at Atlanta in the MLS. So again, these are young goalkeeper coaches that started with Star Goalkeeper Academy and now that are going on to train some of the best goalkeepers in the world because of your passion, motivation, and uh, guidance. So again, that that educational process, I think, and these, uh, using them as an example, I mean, um, knowing Aaron personally, um, he always wanted to learn more, was hungry to see different soccer cultures, to see uh, different training sessions, to learn from everybody. And now, you know, with Brad Guzan, who is also an exceptional, well-accomplished goalkeeper at the international and national level, you know, you're talking about a, a great relationship. So exceptionally important. I want to thank you um, for sharing with us the art of goalkeeping, your passions and your experience. Coaches, if you have any questions for Coach Gaspar, always stargoalkeeperacademy.com. Dan Gaspar is there for you to answer any questions. You know, he has a passion for goalkeeping, whether it's uh, the youth level or the national team. So he's happy to answer any questions. And I want to thank you on behalf of Keeperstop.com for being a part of this experience. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation, the opportunity to share our philosophy. Keep in touch. Any questions, Keeperstop.com is here for you. Look forward to our next post. Make sure you subscribe.